Hey guys, I'm Kevin Tates, working with LMC Truck to provide you with some technical information and videos that are going to help you out with your truck project. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace and upgrade the fuel lines in a 67 to 72 Chevy pickup. Now, our truck started out like a lot of them, a six-cylinder farm truck, and somewhere along the line, somebody has upgraded to a V8. But during the process, they may or may not have compromised a little bit of the safety and effectiveness of the fuel system. Check it out. Now, there's a lot going on here, but this is okay. From the steel line coming from the pump, we go to a sort of a soft and mushy hose. I'm not sure if it's fuel rated hose, so we're going to replace that. I like the idea of an inline filter, but this one has probably seen its time come and go. Again, we've got a cracked line here. The clamps, I'm not sure about them, so we can do better than this, and you can too. We're also going to replace the fuel lines from the tank to the fuel pump, and we're going to show you some of the options that you've got if you're doing this project. Now, one of the things I like the most about the LMC truck catalogs is not only do you get a good description of what's available, but also the exploded diagrams showing how the orientation of the parts is on the vehicle. Now, we've got replacement 516 lines, which is what this truck came with from the factory, but the upgrade here is the fact that they're stainless steel, so the carbon steel degradation that you get with time doesn't happen with stainless steel, but we can do one better. Now, if you've got high horsepower dreams like we do with our C10, you know that fuel volume is very important. So we're going to upgrade to the 3 8 inside diameter lines rather than the factory replacement 5 16 We're going to go from the tank down through the floor, meet up with the 3 8 ID line along the frame rail, and finally, from the fuel pump to the carburetor. These are all pre-bent lines, so the fit is going to be factory correct, and they're stainless steel, so they're going to probably outlast the truck. You can also pick up reducers, adapters, and grommets to complete your fuel system right from the LMC truck catalog. We also ordered a 24-inch fuel-rated hose kit with factory-correct clamps and some frame rail clamps just in case we need ours because our truck is pretty rusty. You also have the option with LMC truck to make your own lines. They've got an aluminum 3 8 ID fuel line kit. Personally, I like the convenience of the stamp steel lines, and they're very accurate, so it just makes things a little simpler when it comes to installation. Now, the final piece in our project is the sending unit itself. This one will give us 3 8 inside diameter fuel delivery, and it's got the correct ohmage on the sender itself, so now our gauge will probably work. Let's talk about tools. You've probably got most of the tools that you need already, but pick up some nitrile gloves that are fuel resistant for obvious reasons. Now, these wrenches are the proper wrenches you need for fuel lines. They're called flare nut wrenches. People call them line wrenches, but it's a unique design that allows a proper clamp load around steel lines. The rest is pretty straightforward. Basic screwdrivers, a socket set, quarter drive is nice to have on hand for the small stuff, and something to cut fuel line. And since we're going to be under the truck, get some safety glasses so the debris doesn't fall in your eyes. Now, speaking of safety, since we're dealing with the fuel system, a fire extinguisher on hand, it's pretty much a must. And some penetrating oil, since your truck might be as rusty as ours, some absorbent mats help to wick up the fuel, and I think we're ready to go. Let's tear it down. Now, step one, we're going to disconnect our battery. This is a simple project, so on a difficulty scale, I'm going to give it a two out of five, but bring a big load of patience with you because it's fiddly work. We're going to stuff some of our absorbing mat underneath the fuel line and pull the line loose from the carburetor. There we go. Not too bad at all, not a whole lot of spillage. Since I don't want gas on the floor, Use a drain pan and an absorbent mat to get underneath the fuel pump. Now we'll disconnect the hard line of the fuel pump with our flare nut wrench. Wow, <laughs> that was loose. And we're going to get some fuel seepage. That's why I've got the drain pan and that absorbent mat underneath the bottom. There it is. Now this goes to the recycle bin. We're going to take our pre-bent steel line and install it onto the pump and just thread it in loosely so we can move it around. Now here, I like the idea of an inline filter, but we don't have a whole lot of real estate here just because of the configuration of the inlet on this carburetor. So what we're going to do, since this carburetor is equipped already with its own inline filter, right there. We're going to blow that guy out, put it back in, and rock and roll. Should be good. There. OK, 
Okay, obviously we've removed the seat from the truck because it gives you a way better look at what we're doing. We're going to start with disconnecting the line that goes through the floor so we don't have a siphoning effect from the tank, then we'll replace the sanding unit. I'm just using the adjustable wrench to steady the fitting so I don't twist anything. Use the flare wrench for the hard line. And there we go. Now we're not going to drain fuel all over our face under the truck. With us. We'll start with a new seal. This guy only goes one way. Nice. Reconnect our resistance wire. You know, gauge should work. Now, technically, this is a jack stands project, but we're going to use our lift to give you guys a better look at what we're doing. There. Now, we don't bury ourselves in fuel. We're replacing this line anyway, so it's sacrificial. It goes away. Okay, now we're going to replace the steel line that goes through the floor and the grommet too. Just by looking at it, the grommet looks like it's in pretty good shape, but it's dry rotted and it's cracked. Our new one is nice and supple. It's going in. It's going to be a better seal. Bye-bye. We'll install the new grommet onto the line first. Feed the line down through before we go crazy down here I'm going to install the flex line up the top that connects the two first blow it through because you never know Now this might be a bit of a wrestling match, but you got to get the slot and the grommet aligned with your sheet metal, and then it'll it'll find its home. Just don't don't get rough with it, and you won't tear the grommet. There we go. That's nice. Happy little grommet. Okay, we're good. There it is. Found its happy home. Okay, we've got five retaining clamps that hold the brake lines and the fuel lines to the C channel of the frame rail. Pretty straightforward pulling them apart. This is some half inch SAE tools. And take your time, because it's kind of hard to get to. Now this may not be easy to see, but once you see it yourself, you'll know exactly what to do. Let's get rid of those guys, and they're not in bad shape, so we might we might just save and reuse them. Get our absorbing mat and rid of the clamp. And that whole rotten fuel line should just come off. Yeah, we got a little bit of dribble. Okay. Yep. Not a whole lot of spillage. We're good. Let me use a single edge blade and cut the rest of the line off that tore which shows that it really needed to be replaced. There we go. Come on. The old line, the old rusty, dirty, nasty line goes to the scrap heap. Even though these lines are shipped with caps on both ends, I don't believe in taking any chances. So we're going to blow the line out with compressed air before we install. Perfect. We're going to gently slide our new 3 8 line along the rail. So you're going to feed the line through the C channel up over the suspension rise. And what you want is a nice gentle loop between the hard line from the tank 
to this delivery line to the pump. You don't ever want your flex line to, to kink. You want a, just a nice gentle loop and that should give us that. So we're gonna let that sit right there, connect it, and connect the other end. And here I've pre-installed my clamps on the fuel hose and I've got enough for a nice gentle loop between the pump and the hard line. So we'll just slide it on, put our other end onto the new hard line. And now you can see we've got a nice gentle loop, no kinks, no signs of kinking, and we should be good to go. All right, there it is. And since we're under here, we're gonna go ahead and snug up our fuel delivery line up to the carburetor. Pre-installed clamps. We'll work it onto the flared end there. Now to our feed line, we've got lots of room, gentle, gentle curves. We like that. We like that. Just the head of the bubble. We're good to go. All right, now we're going to replace all of the line clamps just to make sure we did it like the factory and that everything's secure and that nothing vibrates. There, snug as a bug in a rug. Now with our hard line here, it's got a threaded fitting with a fuel seat on it. Because this is just a push fitting and it's a goofy configuration, this has been changed out, it's non-stock. What we're gonna do is add a brass fitting with the correct seat, thread it in to our LMC truck hard line, and now we just got a simple push fitting with clamps right here, and we've completed our fuel circuit. Single edge razor blade works great. Make it a nice straight cut on fuel line. <coughs> there, all the way. All right. Now we can check for leaks. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and pressurize the system and see if it leaks anywhere. <laughs> well, we know 100% that our system works, our pump works, and we'll check and see if it's dry underneath. If it is, we're done. Okay, it's dry at that threaded fitting, and it's dry at that threaded fitting. We're good to go, we're sealed. So now we've got a leak-free, high-flow, brand-new fuel delivery system, and it's stainless steel. It'll probably outlive the rest of the truck. So we hope we passed on some tips to you if you're thinking about redoing the fuel system on your 67 to 72 Chevy pickup. And in the meantime, make sure you check out the LMC Truck catalog or go to lmctruck.com for more inspiration or ideas on how you can make your truck project even better. For now, I'm Kevin Tates. Thanks for watching.